Father, we come before you today and we know that you're awesome in everything that you do in salvation. Thank God you rescue us and you give us a story to tell because we, where we were, we're not anymore. What we were, we're not any longer. We are now declared as children of the Most High God, redeemed, washed in the blood, and secured by you, you today. And that means today that we have a promise from God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And nothing can remove that from us today. Not only are you that to us, but you are also today the God that brings us through the trials, the operations, the struggles, the problems, and the things that we face in life. Phil is sitting in the church today, had a four-way by bypass done just a week or so ago and here he is in church this morning as a testimony because you are his you have changed his life and you're his story today you have rescued him thank you for the healing that you're giving now lord we got other folks that need healing and we had many of those names mentioned at 10 o'clock this morning but we think particularly lord of libby Britt in the hospital needs nothing short of a miracle from God. We realize what doctors say. We realize what they're going through, but we also realize as a God that's bigger than all of that. And we just pray this morning and believe and trust you, Lord, that all things today, Libby is in your hands. And God, you know what's best. And we're going to trust you, praise you, and thank you, and believe. Thus saith the Lord, but there's nothing wrong with praying for healing. There's nothing wrong with God's people saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus and through the power of the blood, touch our sister and give healing to her body and restore her. Well, also for Jerry Butler who had surgery last week, and Lord, he's not feeling well this morning. We just pray a mighty touch from above in his benefit that, Lord, you will apply the goodness and the grace of God and many others that are going through issues with their health. Lord, you made us, and if you made us, you have the power, the authority. You don't need a doctor's authority. You don't need an insurance company's authority. You are the authority. And you can apply the healing of heaven in that benefit. I pray for everyone in this room today that, Lord, you will touch them by your grace, your power, your spirit. Pour out your goodness upon them today. May our hearts be receptive and ready to receive. Thus saith the Lord, we claim today a risen Savior. We claim today the power of the blood. We claim today the name above every name. We claim today your grace great presence in this room that, Lord, you can turn lives around. You can, Lord, lift diseases. You can heal. You can restore. You can change. You can forgive. Lord, you can give hope and encouragement. You can do all things because, as Jeremiah 32, 17 says, there's nothing too hard for our God. A Lord God, there is nothing, nothing, N-O-T-H-I-N-G, nothing too hard for you. So we claim that power that you will touch us today in such a mighty and glorious way that you get all the glory you get all the praise for you the god who's worthy and we pray this prayer in jesus name all to your glory honor and praise thank you lord and all god's children said amen, amen. now give the lord a thanks offering clap your hands and give him glory for he is a worthy and blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Oh yeah, this is what it's about. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, I'll say, Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun it is shining too, amen. When the world's all as it should be, I'll still say, Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, the pain in the offering. Still, blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. gonna say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name oh jesus blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glorious name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name
you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. Woo, yeah. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. And we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. And we've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better light, there's a better light. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. Oh, yeah. If you believe it, if you receive it. If you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, well, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains. Well, he's a chain breaker. Praise the old God for the Son of thy love. For Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. Fire's coming down. Why don't you shake hands, hug next, tell folks, you're glad to see him in church, and I'm glad to see you today. Welcome along today. We're going to be continuing today in the book of Romans, a very important book designed for the church, and today we need to hear what Paul is saying to us today. So I want you to stay tuned for the message today, and I pray it will show you today the power of our God, what you have in him, and how he'll change your life. And truly today, it's by faith alone, dear friend. Thank the Lord. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You stay tuned for the message today, Romans chapter 4. And we'll be talking today about the footsteps of faith and how they will make such a difference in our lives. I want to encourage you to come and worship with us. God's doing a mighty thing here at this church, and we want you to be a part of it. You can be blessed of the Lord in a mighty, mighty and great way. You'll just simply come and praise Him with us, shout with us. Maybe today if you've got trials and struggles in your life, He can meet those needs and struggles in your life also. For with that God, there's nothing too hard for Him. You better remember that. Our location is right here in Lynchburg, Virginia, 411 Blue Ridge Street, one block off of Lakeside Drive. Come and worship the Lord at GBC. Bless you today.
rewind all the way to verse 1. We're going to sing that again. Amen. Here we go. She's going to get her back up. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thunder glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thunder glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Spirit shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, by the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, by the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May so be
thankful we are to God for his faithfulness to us. If you have your Amen. Bibles, you can turn to the book of Romans chapter 4. And today we're dealing with the footsteps of faith, picking up a chapter 9 down through verse 12. Now, it's, <laughs> these verses uh, are kind of a, one sense of the speaking, a little tough verses to speak on. But it's all a part of God's word. But I will bring you into the meaning of these words as we read it today. And uh, today we continue in this move, uh, this um, series that we're on, that we're talking about in the book of Romans. But this, these scriptures will move you today strategically with a spiritual focus through the book of Romans to get you where you and I need to be with the Lord in our walk and our relationship with Him. The footsteps of faith is radically different today than walking from that of the realm of reason, emotions, and intellect. And many times we're controlled by those issues in our life, our reasoning, our feelings, our intellect, uh, all these things that are in our physical nature today, many times, will, if you're not careful, will mislead you. And that you find yourself not walking down the path of faith, but you find you're walking down the path of flesh. Flesh, flesh is always going to fail you and never get you to the destination that God has for you today. You can't mix today flesh and faith. You've got, today be, you've got to be today a person of faith. Well, I got faith when I got saved. You sure did because of what Paul said in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that being the case today, you entered into a relationship with God by the process of faith, by faith alone. Now, that faith just didn't bring you to a relationship in Christ to save you, write your name in heaven, say, okay, everything's good from now on. I don't have to worry about a thing. No, that walk of faith is a walk every day. You've got saving faith in the fact that you've received the Lord. Now, today, you need living faith that you'll live for the Lord and that he will work mightily in your life. So we're actually, as born again, we're called to live above all these emotions and intellect and feelings and other things that we encounter in our life in the physical realm of our lives. So because, you know what, if you're not careful, your physical realm will just absolutely ring you out, control you, and, and basically leave you and render you unusable for God. Because you're so flesh emotion, drama, all these crazy things that we involve in our lives, we become so inundated with it that it really becomes a controlling factor. So I'm glad that faith enables you, hallelujah, faith enables you to enter the realm of today supernatural possibilities. Amen. Because Jesus said in Mark 9, all things are possible to one that will believe, right? So therefore today, how is your belief system? How is your faith life? Are you really believing that God can do the impossible? You don't know what I'm facing, Pastor. It's not important. And you know what? You're centering too much of your life on what you're in rather than the God who's in it with you. You become so inundated, controlled by what you're facing and going through, and you're wearing these knapsacks on your back of your troubles and trials, and man, that's what your life is all about. Well, where's God in all of that? I'm glad you can take all those knapsacks and just dump them right on these halters today. And God will take whatever is in your life that's waiting and burdening your heart. And today he can turn it around because he's still, listen to me church, he's still a supernatural God that can still do supernatural things today. That's not today a Baptist thing, a Pentecostal thing, or a Methodist thing, or a denominational thing. That's a God thing. That's a Bible thing. And I believe today that our God is able to do that which is impossible in the physical realm. Amen. So with God, truly all things are possible with him. So there are some scriptural principles here about faith that I want to help you with right now. And there's a couple of things, three things I want to share with you just as an introduction. One is today it's not rooted in human effort, self-confidence, or intellect. You can be smart. You today can have a lot. You today can be all those things today. But you can be spiritually absolutely dumb. You say, preacher, what are you calling me? No, I'm telling you today, your relationship, your faith is not rooted in your intellect. You can know the Bible backwards and forwards in 25 different languages, but that's not going to get you into a relationship. You've got to know Christ. You've got to know the Christ of the Bible. So it's not based today. It's not based in our human effort. Well, I'm working my way to heaven. Oh, really? You're never going to get there then, are you? 
Because it's not on works of righteousness which we've done, but it's on what Jesus has already done for us. Secondly today, and I could preach a message on these little three points. It's not rooted in good luck. Good luck, preacher. Oh, really? I don't need it because I don't believe in it. So it's not rooted in good luck, social connection, or optimism. I'm an optimist, optimistic person. I've read the books on optimism. I'm just positive all the way. Oh, yeah, wait till a storm hits you and see how positive you are. It's not based on your good looks. It's not even based on your good luck. Because that good looks, we'd all, well, anyway, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> the fact is today, well, I've got connections. Oh, yeah? Your connections can't do nothing for you. Only Jesus can. Thirdly, today, it's not rooted in religious formulas. Yeah, but if I do this, God will do that. No, that's not what the Bible says. It's rooted in faith alone. Amen. So that all these religious formulas that all these denominational gurus have come up with today are not worth a paddle to blow them up with. What you need is Jesus, his word in your life. Amen. And today, that's what makes the difference, doesn't it? So faith is rooted today, here's what it's rooted in. It's rooted today in God's unlimited power and unchanging word. Say that again, Pastor. Access on the screen. Faith is, let's read it together. You need this. Are you ready? Here we go. Faith is rooted in God's unlimited power and unchanging word. Our problem is we try to change the word by rewriting it. Folks, we don't need to rewrite it. We just need to live it. Amen. So if you're not living by the word, then I'm going to tell you what you're living in. You're living in a state of worry because you're worrying yourself all the time because you're not living by faith. So today we continue in this powerful study for the church because that's the reason that Paul wrote Romans. He was writing it to us, the church, that we needed this. So if you're able and you would stand, I would appreciate it. If you're not, just stay like you are where you're at. And that's just fine and dandy. I just thank God for God's word and how powerful it is in our lives. I'm in Romans chapter 4. I'm picking up with verse number 9 and reading down through verse number 12. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was... Uh, in, uh, in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. You may be seated. Thank you. We're here today because we are all needful of God's word to be applied to our lives. Neither you nor I tonight have, uh, today have aspired, reached the place that we all we could, should, and ought to be for the Lord. Today, we're still a work in motion, if you would. God saved you, redeemed you today, and we may have great knowledge of the Bible, and we may have great experience through the word, but you still have not obtained, reached that place, a pinnacle of all you could be for Christ. So then we today are constantly looking to the Lord and trusting him to work in us and through us today. See, God can never work through you until he's first worked in you. Amen. You've got to let God work in your life. So have you ever been lost in life? I can tell you all of us have been in one sense of the speaking. Have you ever been lost going on a trip somewhere? I know we'll forget one time Cynthia and I, we were going to Florida. So we would drive, after we'd get out of church on Sunday night, we'd run home, throw the bags in the car, throw Tiff in the back seat, <laughs> knock her out, put her to sleep. <laughs> Sin would do the driving. 
And usually I was gone by the time we'd get to Greensboro. So that particular night, we was driving to, driving to Florida. We was going to drive down and keep going, and we'd drive all the way through the night. Cynthia was an amazing driver. She could drive all night. Man, never, never have a hiccup. Amen. I don't know how she did it. But anyway, we was driving along, and we got on down the road, and I thought, well, we're probably somewhere, you know, down in South Carolina or someplace like that. So she woke me up. She said, um, I think I made a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> she sure did. We took about a two-hour excursion in a different direction. And finally, we got back on the right track and got to our destination. Well, uh, we've, we've had several of those occurrences. The th four of us here, a couple, three or four years ago, we decided we wanted to go up and see the star at, uh, on top of Mill Mountain in Roanoke. So that's no problem. Any of y'all know how to get there? No, I'm not really sure. Well, I got GPS on my phone. <laughs> Log it in, baby. And here we go, Drew. Logged it in. So here we go. We're going up Mill Mountain. Well, we thought it was Mill Mountain. Where's the star, man? <laughs> we can't find the star. Well, Mill Mountain, I don't know where it was at. It must have fell in the ocean or something. But we... We was cruising on up the roads and winding around, and then this little lady with a sweet voice speaks through that GPS system on the cell phone and says, you have arrived at your destination. Yeah, we sure did. Somebody's driveway at a mobile home park. Amen. <laughs> Forget the phone. We did get there. Just as a little the rest of the story type thing, Paul Harvey type thing. Now the rest of the story. We got there, and we was going up there, and the guy, the park coordinator, or whatever he is, County Mountie or something, wearing a smoke of the bear hat, says, close, you got to leave. Get out of here. So we never got to see the star. But we went back. We did see it. <laughs> so I think we've all had those places that we've turned the wrong way in life. You know, it can be in your travels, it can be in your experiences of life, a wrong turn that caused you to arrive at some place that you really didn't want to be. Even in life and the circumstances we face in life sometimes will bring us to those places too that we thought we were headed in the right direction. We thought we had discerned God's will. We thought we were headed in that place where God wanted us and we found, man, we were going the wrong way all along, amen. So... We didn't really maybe get to the plan that we desire to be at in our lives. You know, in literal travel, we don't have maps now any longer. You don't pull out your atlas and this big book and all these states and all these roads. If you still want to have one of those, you put it, I ought to sell it on eBay because they don't make them anymore, I don't think. But we have now a process that is called GPS that I just shared with you. And I hate to tell you, but GPS can also send you in the wrong direction. Perhaps in life, let's step out of the physical realm and let's step into the spiritual aspect of it. You, maybe you feel lost in life today. You feel that you're wandering aimlessly in life and you can't seem to get the bearing, the direction. And it just seems like you're bumping into walls you're not physical walls, but spiritual walls. You're just not getting to where God wants you to be, to be what God wants you to be. So you find, your you find yourself in a place of decision, and you become at a point that in your life, you become kind of at your wit's end. You're trying to figure these things out, and you know sometimes you just can't do it. Sometimes you just can't figure out your direction. And this is why it's so important that we involve God in everything that we do. Listen, don't make a decision unless you consult God about what you're about to do, Amen. And I think all of us in this life have been lost spiritually because today the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's inclusive of everyone that's on planet earth, has been and will be, that every person comes into this world lost and there's only one way to change that and that's to give your heart to Jesus. Amen. I don't know what your spiritual condition may be today. You either one or two things. Listen, there's no in between. You're not praying for the Catholic Church to say a lot of prayers and to pull you out of purgatory because that doesn't exist. The fact of the matter is today, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And the only way you're going to go to heaven today is trusting the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins on the cross of Calvary and made a way for us where we had no way. 
So today he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man will come to the Father but by me. What's that way? It's the way of the blood. It's the way of the cross. It's the way of Jesus today. And you've got to come by that means and that way today. I believe today that spiritually we have been wandering, and I was one place in time in my life, we were wandering spiritually in the wrong direction, knowing that if there was not a change, our destination was going to be a place that was not very good. Because let me tell you what the Bible says in the book of Romans. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the root of the problem of all these evidences is, is who or what are you following? Who or what are you following in life? Well, I've got mentors in my life. Well, that's good in one sense of the speaking, but don't let that be the chart and compass of your life. What somebody else has done is not your hero. What somebody else has done and how they got there may not be the means that God wants you to have. See, you're an individual. God created you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has a purpose for your life today. What is it, Pastor? I don't know. Why don't you check with God and his word? I'm sure he'll be glad to reveal it to you. And God will show you what that purpose is. But I'm going to tell you, the purpose of life in our spiritual life today that also affects our physical life is that life is not always an easy path. It's not always sunshine and roses. Sometimes you've got to go through the valleys of the shadows of life. Sometimes you've got to go through the pains, but for every pain, there's a peace of God that will surpass all understanding. For every issue that you face in life, I want you to know there's a Jesus who's with you to bring you through what you face. So why do I go through hard places and hard times? But well, one, you've got to trust God by faith, and two, God's going to work in your life to develop you to make you a stronger Christian for his glory and his praise, amen. You know, all the hard places that we've been and faced and gone through in life, and just not over the last couple years, but back through life period. I can tell you, God has a plan in everything. And if you'll trust his plan and put your faith and your confidence in him, God will bring you through and he'll give you the grace that you need. And he'll put peace in your heart and he'll even put praise on your lips that you can say, look what the Lord has done because I've trusted in God. I've got through what I was facing. Amen. So we have the tendency to fall our head because we trust our intellect. Don't do that. We have a tendency to trust our hands because we trust our abilities. It won't get you there. We have a tendency to follow our heart. How many times have I heard people say, well, I'm following my heart. That's a dangerous thing because when you're trusting your heart, you're trusting your emotions. And emotions can give you a false reading. Amen. We have a tendency to follow our eyes. We trust whatever we think looks good. Well, what may look good on the surface may be the worst thing that's ever happened to you. We trust many things and the list goes on and on. But unfortunately, we, we're not following the one that we need to follow. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not following God's word. Or we bring our Bibles to church and yet yeah, we lay it on the table and we even grab the sheets back there and read through the Bible this year. But let me ask you this. What impact is it making on your life? What change is it necessitating to draw you closer to Christ? Folks, listen. Just looking the role and playing the role and trying to show up and all those things is not what gets you there. You've got to follow Jesus, Amen. And you've got to follow him by faith because God doesn't deal with today with the sight of what you see. God deals with what you believe by faith. And if you'll learn to believe by faith, let me tell you what, God can do great and mighty things in your life. So therefore, the, the text today is a clarion call today, a warning that we cannot, you know, do what seems right in our eyes, in our intellect, with our hands and all those things today. The word of God says, listen, the Lord is calling us today to stop following all these things today because we want to trust these things that's going to fail us. And folks, you're never going to get there. There are no shortcuts when it comes to God. We're called to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Well, how do I find the footsteps? Open the book. The footsteps of Jesus are found in this word. And if you'll learn to follow the word, you'll learn to follow what God has for you. 
He'll lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll take you by the still waters. He'll take you by the lush green pastures and you will then discover exactly what David was talking about in Psalm 23, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall, oh I love this word, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does he mean? Sitting in the church? No, sitting in his presence. Following him, trusting him, obeying him, living for him, amen. We need this church. Can you say amen? amen. That's mighty weak. Well, it's going to get worse, so it may get weaker before it's done with. So therefore, the Lord is calling us today to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So what does it mean then to follow in the footsteps of faith? Well, our theme goes this way today. Here comes the theme. Are you ready? Amen. God saves us by faith alone for his glory alone. God saves us by faith alone for his glory alone. I don't know if you've got this yet, but I'm going to tell you one more time. Your life is not about you. Your life is about him. And your life is about bringing glory to him. And if you're trying to bring glory and gain and get to yourself, you're on the wrong path. And you know what you're going to get? Disappointment. There's a better way. And you've got to come the way that God has prescribed. Yeah, but it does, it's not an easy way. Whoever said that it was. But I'm going to tell you, when you arrive and you see him face to face and you behold his glory, you will say, man, it was worth every bit of it. It's worth serving God today. So God saves us by faith alone for his glory alone. Let me give you about three points here. Don't forget the first step is foundational. The first step is foundational. So the first step matters chiefly when it comes to our faith. So the first step in salvation then becomes very critical. Well, I'm trusting, you know, I'm my good works. I'm, I'm trusting the church that I'm a member of. And I, I'm trusting the preacher that baptized me. Listen, all that is false hope. You trust Jesus because only Jesus can save you. I've had people say, well, preacher, doc, save me. No, I did not. I can't save you. Now, I can show you Jesus and his salvation plan, but you've got to make the decision to involve that in your life, right? So that being the case today, the first step in salvation is very critical because you've got to believe by faith. So here's a point for you. In verse 9 is the false foot, footing of works. And you would be surprised how many people are trying to work their way to heaven. Yeah, I know that the high church, these denominational, these, these conference churches. No, it's in Baptist churches too. It's in all of them. Well, I'm working my way to heaven. Well, I hate to tell you, I tried that and it didn't work. The word of God came to me and said, you're going the wrong way. And man, I'm glad God showed me the right way. So Paul was telling the Jews that they were on a false footing. That's what he was talking about here. It wasn't circumcision that saved. It wasn't the flesh that saves you today. Because salvation is not obtained through a physical act today of the flesh. But I'm, keep, I'm trying to keep the Ten Commandments. You can't do it. Well, I'm trying to keep the golden rule. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't do any of that. Every one of us have violated the principles of life and the word. Every one of us. So what do you do? So I can't work my way to heaven? No, you can't. And no, you won't. So therefore today, Paul was telling them, the Jews, that they were on a false footing. And if you're trusting your works to get you there, you're on shaky ground, friend. You're on false footing. So the way of the flesh is not a firm foundation today. I tell you, you've got to have Christ in your life spiritually today. So Paul wasn't just speaking to the Jews. He was also speaking to what is called the Judaizers. Well, what are the Judaizers? The Judaizers were Jews who had been placed and had placed their faith in Christ, but they still clung to the flesh ways how to become a Christian. It won't work. The Judaizers would look at the cross and say, Jesus died for me at the cross, but they would sprinkle in a little self-effort into the mix of it. It's no sprinkling of nothing. 
It's through the blood of Jesus alone. There's no entry in any other way. There's no back doors, no windows open. You've got to come the way that God has prescribed because today the way of the cross is what leads home, amen. So you see that today in so many churches, grace mixed with a little effort. We just tell people to do, oh, here's that statement that I deplore. Just do the best you can. God loves you. Why do they draw this baloney out? Why do they look so pious and hump the shoulders over and look like they've been beat with a stick? Hallelujah. Jesus saved me. Amen. I'm standing tall for him. Amen. Amen. It wasn't the church that saved me. It wasn't the preacher that saved me. It wasn't a baptistry that saved me. It wasn't anything that saved me except the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? The blood of Jesus. It's not your works that's going to get you into heaven today. So he said, listen, you're on false footing. I wonder how many churches in Lynchburg today that are preaching a false footing gospel and giving people a false hope. See, I want you to see something today. I want you to see the firm foundation that is found in faith alone. So faith was counted to Abraham as what? Righteousness. So the first step Abraham took was faith, which was not an act. So this faith step was a foundational step. Can I ask you, have you made that foundational step in your life? Because see, you're either building your life on the world. Oh, Jesus did a beautiful job of illustrating that in a parable, which is an illustration. He talked about sinking sands and he talked about solid rocks. He talked about the storms, the winds, the things that happen in life. And those who built their life, those who built their house, which is a representation of your life, and built it on the sands of life. And when the storms came, what happened to the house? It was destroyed. Then he talked and he used another, another illustration about those who built their life on the rock. And when the storms came and the winds blew and the rains beat the, the house, the life still stood. On Christ a solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. Peter said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. It's not the little rock. Peter, it's built on Christ, the solid rock. Peter failed. He denied the Lord three times. How was his life even before that? A mess, a tangled, twisted mess. But only Christ can you build your life on and have a foundation today. Yeah, the storms will come. Yeah, the problems will come. Yeah, the world will beat on you. But let me tell you what, when it's all said and done, you're still standing for Jesus because you place your faith in him. You're saved by faith alone. So the step of faith Abraham took was basically the centerpiece of Paul's gospel. That's the centerpiece. That is basically the focal point. You're saved by faith alone apart from any works of the law. It won't save you. So, but let me just make a side note to this. You are to live by the commands of God's word. But understand there's only one means of salvation and that's Jesus Christ. So, so this was not just a centerpiece of the gospel, but it also re was reflective of Paul's ministry. You're not saved by anything you do. You're saved by faith alone. But preacher, I've just been, I've given to this and I've done that. Sorry, friend. It's not going to count. Works are false footing. Faith is a firm foundation. So then here's another truth for you. Faith is always centered, centered, Faith is always, let's put it this way, faith is always a foreign step. You're going places that you haven't been before. So faith by nature is something today that we are somewhat blinded to. We have eyes to see, but we're blinded to him. So you've got to reach out and step out by faith, don't you? Isn't that what Abraham did when he stepped out of his tent that particular morning and God said, I'll show you the way to go? Amen. Amen. He didn't give him a GPS system. He didn't give him a cell phone. He didn't give him a map. He didn't give him a three-page dissertation about what he wanted to do in his life. He simply said, you go in my name. And he followed the Lord. So we've got to do the same thing, right? 
You've got to trust the Lord in all things today. But I, I'm trying to get there my way. I'm trying to, my life is about me. I'm making my plan. I've got all these things going on. I'm going to tell you by practical experience, been there, done that, it won't work. I had my life plotted out and planned, and I've told you this a thousand times, and that's a thousand and one. Retired when I was 55, play golf every day, do what I wanted to do. Well, I made the mistake of saying that out loud. It didn't make any difference whether I said it out loud or not. It was the intent of my heart, and God knew it, but it wasn't God's plan. But I tell you what, no, I don't play, I haven't played golf, hit them hack a few balls and get up there and putt putting around a little bit. Those little stupid game. But, but as far as getting out and playing nine or 18 holes of golf, I haven't done that in so long. I don't know how to hold a golf club anymore. But anyway, you know what? Hallelujah, I don't need that. My plans didn't work. I look back and I, well, if I had, you know, don't we often do that? If I had done this, well, you didn't, so shut up and forget it. <laughs> kind of blunt preacher. Yeah, I am, but I am compassionate. But folks, you can't plan your life. God has already planned your life. And what you've planned for your life is always a substandard beneath where he's put you on a foundation. What you've planned is on shaky ground and could fall apart. Yeah, but I got all this money preacher and you know, I'm in pretty good shape and so forth. Get sick real good one time and see where that money goes. Bye bye. I'm telling you, folks, you can't lay up treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But he said, lay up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For, here's the gotcha, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Let me hurry up. So our flesh nature is a wrong step. So 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So faith may be foreign and may be a foreign step to you, but it's always the first foundational step that you need in your life. So the path that God's calling us to do is by faith alone, for it is the gospel alone. Amen. So you've got to do some things. You've got to do this. You've got to trust God for what you cannot see. Oh, listen today, man, that's what faith is all about anyway, isn't it? Well, I got all tomorrow planned out and mapped out. You know what? That's got all changed just that quick. So fear will paralyze you. But you know what faith does? It releases you. It sets you free. So your circumstance will quench you spiritually, but faith will overcome your circumstance. Some of you are sitting in circumstances right now and you're up to your earlobes in it and you're about to drown in it. Stop it! Trust God by faith for he alone can bring you through what you face. God didn't today design you. I know we've gotten into this victim mentality. I'm so sick of it I could spit. Everybody wants to be a victim. Well, you're not. You choose to be. And if you're a victim, you're living a substandard, defeated life. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you, amen. Why are you embracing the lesser when God's got a better for you, amen? You're not a victim. Get up. Kick that pity pot that you're sitting on out from underneath you and rise up and remember who you are in Christ that you today have been delivered by the power of the blood and Christ loves you with an everlasting love and God has got your life in his hands and he will get you through whatever you encounter in life. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise y'all. Come on. You shout more. I'd preach faster and we'd be done quicker. So you're keeping, your, you're keeping yourself here a whole lot longer. <laughs> So, for whatever, but whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 4. So you have to trust what you cannot see. Then trust God for who he is and not just for what he gives you. See, too many Christians are on a what I can get out of God mission. It's not what you can get out of God. Listen, if he didn't end up and save you, good God, that's enough to make a Baptist shout. So Abraham was trusting God for promises that were never even fulfilled. So faith 
never promised whatever you want, you'll get it. Oh, we got them out there that's doing that. I cruise through the channel selector on my podunk Comcast channel cable that I got in my home. I got the podunk channels, amen. I got the poverty version. <laughs> But I got some of those up in the thousands, but they throw all the religious stuff up in the thousands, right? So I flip through, and here's these guys saying, you just name it and claim it, and God will give it to you. Oh, yeah, be sure to write that check. Call on that 800 number. Be sure to have your credit card ready. We're going to set you up. You're going to get, woo, you're going to get blessed so good. Mm-hmm. No, all they're going to do is put their hands in your, your funds and pull out all your money and say, bye, thanks. It's not based on what you get. Listen, if God didn't do anything else but save your ever-dying soul and give you the promise of heaven, if he never provided nothing else for you, it still would be worth it all. But I'm telling you today, I've seen, he, David said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. I know a God that will supply your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. I've never seen God fail. I've never seen God turn anybody away. I've never seen God today change his mind and say, sorry, I'm not going to help you. Man, when you come to him with the right motive and you come by faith alone, that he'll get the glory alone, I'm telling you, God will take care of you in every fashion and form of your life today. Amen. He will. Amen. Second point. The next two are kind of short, I hope. <laughs> Don't forget the sign is not the destination. Well, circumstances was not meant to save you, but it was a reminder of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 11, he received a sign of circumcision. So a sign points to something else, right? A, a sign points to something. You know, you may be heading down the road, you're going to the beach, or some of these folks have gone, that sign don't do anything for you. That sign just tells you you've got 25 more miles, boy, to what you want to go to. And what you're going to, that sign don't do nothing but just say, yeah, there's a destination for you. That's all that sign does. Circumstances pointed to a greater reality, but it, it pointed to the reality that Abraham was saved by faith. So verse 11 goes on to say, he received the sign of circumcision, a seal, underscore that word, a seal of the righteousness of the faith. So a seal then is what? A sign is telling you, and then a seal is a guarantee, an assurance or a confirmation of what you're going to receive. So you go be bopping down the highway, you're heading to the beach, you've got 25 more miles, you just start counting them down, and then all of a sudden you see the big sign, welcome to, amen. There's the guarantee, see the sign and the seal. So with what Paul is saying, it's sealing that, you really did what you believed by faith. The, the act is not what is valuable. The faith that you have in God is what is, is really valuable today. A seal does not magnify itself. It magnifies the value of something else. So circumcision was not valuable, but the faith that Abraham had that justified him, that's what was Valuable. The justification that you've received by Christ through his blood is what is valuable in your life. Amen. So what is the sign of our faith? What is the seal of our faith? I'm glad you asked that. The sign of saving faith is holiness. Mm -hmm. Holiness. Say holiness. holiness. Say, I sure need it in my life. All right, that's three of you. Come on, the rest of you need it too. The God who justifies is the God who sanctifies. So the God who saves you is the God who's going to make you holy. And you know what? He will do it. And you're either going to do it cooperatively or you're going to do it and God's still going to do it. So if you're not growing, if you're not changing, then you probably don't have assurance of your salvation. And I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying the sign of saving faith is holiness. It's the proof. It's the proof. The holiness is the proof that you belong to Jesus. Well, I'm just skating through. No, it's too thin of ice. You can't skate on it. Your holiness 
It's representative of your life for Christ. So you realize that God who justifies also sanctifies. Moreover today, the faith that justifies also satisfies. You know why so many folks are not, Christian people are not satisfied? Never satisfied. You know why? Because they're never walking in holiness to begin with. So if you, are, if you have saving faith, you will then notice a great satisfaction that is only found. This world can't satisfy you. The government can't satisfy you by any stretch. I mean, my Lord, we got the biggest mess going on and the biggest twisted mess I've ever seen in Washington. I believe in the history of this country. It is the biggest mess I have ever in my life seen. Lord of mercy. All they're doing, I, I, just give them baseball bats and let them go on and knock each other's brains out and get it over with. <laughs> then maybe we can get somebody in there that's got some sense. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a couple points here. Your affections will start to change when you are walking in holiness. Because you know what? Now you're going to have an affection towards God instead of the world. You will want to follow Jesus. We won't have, you won't have to be beaten to get to church. <laughs> you also will desire him. Instead of pushing him out, you'll want him in your life. This is the evidence of repentance. This is the evidence of holiness. And the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you that really authenticates your faith today is real. Amen. Your faith is authenticated. Uh, yeah, it's that. <laughs> authenticated by the Holy Spirit. I talked a lot today. Uh, forsaken all false footing and stand firm on the foundation of your faith. So Jesus fulfilled this perfectly. And that's indeed what the step of faith will do. Jesus died for you so that you could stand firm on the foundation which he has done, supplied, and provided for you. B is this. Don't forget the sign is not the destination. And here's the third point and I'm through. He said, whew. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget the path. It's well paved. Amen. So God will do whatever he has promised that he will do. I've never seen God forsake a promise in his word. And you can't sit there and tell me that he has with you. Because God is as good as his word. The path has always been well paved. The book, which is called the word of God, is replete with examples of people placing their faith in Christ. And it worked for them. And you know what? You know what else it will do? It'll work for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but that's a bunch of Old Testament people, New Testament people. That was back when God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, you know, in Hebrews, is a, is a litany of people who trusted Christ. Read, uh, go home and read Hebrews 11. Here's a litany of people who trusted Christ by faith alone. Hebrews 11, every person mentioned put their faith in Christ, not something, but they put their faith in Jesus. Amen. Today, the path is well paved for you and I also. So this path is accessible for all because faith becomes the great equalizer. God is no respecter of persons today. There's room for you. You know what else? Faith not only is a great equalizer, but faith today is also today a great unifier. You're unified in faith with Christ. Hallelujah. What does that do? That puts us in unity and puts us on the same page to do what God's called us to do. It's no spinoffs in this thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's serving God and keeping your focus on him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. So the same God who saved you will sanctify you. And one day, hallelujah, he is going to glorify you. Amen. So praise God, he will keep you in his grip. I've been saved since the, since the 2nd of February, 1975. And I've been in his grip ever since. Man, it's good. He's never let me go. He's never kicked me out. He's never disowned me. Oh, I was taken in by adoption. And you were too. But you know what? You come in by adoption, but he calls you his sons and daughters, his children. Hallelujah. 
believers, followers of Jesus today. So, you know, I'm glad he will keep you in his grip. He will not fail you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. He will hold you fast. And even in the storms of life, hold me fast through every storm that I face, oh Lord. He will. He'll bring you through what you encounter. You're safe in Jesus today. You're safe in Christ. So therefore today you can let you can, uh, you can proclaim what Jesus said in the first part of John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be tr troubled. I've never seen so many troubled Christians that are so messed up, so in difficulty and disgust, confusion. That's not God's plan for your life. <laughs> I tell you what you're telling the world. You're telling the world, I'm not following Christ by faith alone. I'm following me by my flesh alone. And that's not God's plan for you. God's plan for you today is that you follow him by faith alone. And you'll find that God will keep his word. You're safe in Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Because as Hebrew tells us, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. So as I close this final plea, are you struggling today? Probability there are people in here struggling today. Are you wandering today? Just because you're sitting in church doesn't mean you're right and ready to meet Jesus. You can be wandering in life today. Are you hurting today? I know a lot of hurting people. Some of them are sitting in this congregation this morning. Or are you lost today? I'll close with these final words simply in one statement. Why don't you just come home to Jesus? By faith alone. And let him work in your life starting today. Father, thank you today for your word, your presence, your power, your spirit. As we stand to our feet today, I don't know the spiritual condition of everyone in this room. I know some testimonies and I believe they're saved. But maybe there's someone here today that does not know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. I'm going to step away from the prayer a moment. You say, preacher, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't have that assurance. Pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved or not. I ask you to do one thing right now. Would you slip your hand up? Slip it back down. Pray for me. Carlton, I'm just not sure. I trust today that you're saved. But are you living and walking in holiness? Are you separated? Are you living by faith alone? Are you being who God has called you to be? If not today, listen, maybe you're going to have struggles. Maybe you're going through pains. Maybe you're going through problems. Why don't you bring those things to Jesus right now? Come home. Come home to Jesus. Now, Father, we commit this invitation to you, and I pray the Spirit today will move on our hearts in such an awesome and tremendous way. Have mercy on us right now. Will you come as we have an invitation song? In Jesus' name. I like the song, and I've been using it a lot for invitation, but it says it so perfectly. We need Christ. We need Him in our lives by the way of the cross.